the iPhone 13 runs 150 billion times faster than the original iPhone. <laughs> it's like, okay. In about a month's time, we will be getting sight of the new iPhone 13, or iPhone 12s. They won't call it that, surely. Well, who cares? It is new iPhone season. Nothing's confirmed, of course, but looking at the analysts with a decent track record, you know, the rumors and leaks, a mid to end of September release is looking very likely. Why should consumers care? Is the new iPhone going to revolutionize the smartphone industry? Let's face it, guys, that's highly unlikely. But based on a recent report from Bloomberg, Apple are expecting to sell a lot of these devices. But why is that? What is so special about it this time around? I do have a couple of theories based on some of the new features that are coming to the iPhone 13. Let's talk about some of them here. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech reviews and I'm here at least once a week. And today we'll cover what we know so far about the iPhone 13, the main features, price and release date and why Apple believes that this time is different. Let's start by talking about what is going on at Apple to believe that they will sell so many of these. They just told their suppliers to build 90 million devices. That's a lot of iPhones, right? It's about 20% more than their usual numbers. I looked around and found some videos and articles, some that believe that this is because of the 120 hertz display. Others are saying that this is because of the, you know, it's the end of the pandemic and people feel more secure to buy a new iPhone. And I believe it's a combination of those factors. But the main contributing factor for me is the fact that there are a lot of people out there who are running an old iPhone. And when I say old, I mean an iPhone that's been used for more than three years. People kept those iPhones because they didn't feel the need to upgrade or they couldn't upgrade because, you know, there was a pandemic. Dan Ives here, who is a tech analyst on Wall Street, reported that there are 250 million iPhones out there out of 975 million iPhones that haven't upgraded in three and a half years. So the demand is going to be there. Of course, out of the 250 million, not everyone will upgrade. Some will probably move to the iPhone 12, maybe, and, and so on. But to me, this is the main reason, and, and it has a name. It's called pent up demand. It's basically a build up of demand that up until now, consumers couldn't satisfy for whatever reason. It becomes this unusually strong demand for a service or a product, you know, that's been building up because people have been holding off making any purchases that weren't really essential. But is Apple now going to give customers good reasons to upgrade? Let's talk about some of the features that could sway new customers or you towards an upgrade. I'm not going to talk about every single one of them here, but some of the key ones, starting with the rumored 120 Hz OLED display. In Apple language, this is likely to be a variation of ProMotion. Although ProMotion was already existing on iPads, those were still IPS displays, not OLED. Of course, when you talk about 120 Hz display, in itself is just a nice thing to have, right? Images and content will look great, but it's a bit more than that. It's the things that the new display will unlock on the iPhone that even though you could do before, it now should allow us to do in a much more acceptable way. Like gaming, sure, this has already been done on Android. It's very old news actually on Android, but this refresh rate on an iPhone, people will freak out, right? They will absolutely go mental about this because they haven't experienced it. Those of us who experienced it on Android devices will go, well done, you know, took you long enough. This is not meant to be an Android versus iOS video. I know there's a lot of rivalry out there. One is better than the other and all of that. I try not to pay too much attention to brand loyalty, you know, that aspect of it. I'm not really that interested in it, but it is a factor, right? The ecosystem lock-in and all of that, those things are real. But thinking about it logically, well, I think these products have become so close to our human limits that from a hardware perspective, really it's starting to not matter so much anymore um, whichever one you pick our eyes can only see so much right on the software side of things all apple google samsung they can all do so much more going back to gaming and an 120 hertz display apple do take their time to do things but when they do deliver something it's usually awesome i did a series of comparisons here on the channel and you know for example genshin impact fried the 12 pro max to a point where it was unplayable whereas the S21 Ultra only dropped a few frames, but carried on. And I know that even though there are loads of great mobile games out there for iOS, Apple could really raise their game here. Maybe I'm being mean here, but you know, the arcade stuff is just, it's not that great yet, is it? Will the iPhone 13 compete with a purpose-built gaming phone? Probably not. But if things like a vapor cooling chamber is introduced, you know, if that rumor is true, that could make the iPhone 13 a gaming machine. I don't know, guys, you know, even using the camera sometimes these days gets it really hot. So they'd have to be really super efficient on cooling to make that happen for me. Okay, so what they're doing with this new display and new chip should push these games to perform better, but what will that do to the battery life? 
glad you asked. According to leaks, uh, the new battery is going to be slightly bigger than the current batteries. Not by much. I'm rounding things up here to keep it simple, but essentially a 10% bump across all of the devices. The iPhone 13 mini will get 2400 milliamp battery, the 13 Pro will get 3100 milliamp battery, and the iPhone 13 Pro Max will get 4350 milliamp battery. But it's not just the battery size that's changing, guys. The speed at which they charge will also go up as well. So faster charging, that is great news. Again, like the display stuff, faster charging is old news on Android devices right now. By the way, if you're interested in seeing how the current flagships perform, I did a fairly different and very realistic battery comparison which is part of a series between the S21 Ultra and the 12 Pro Max uh, that you should check out after this video if you're interested. Another upgrade that could sway people to this new iPhone is the chip, of course, right? We're, we're likely getting a new A15 chip. I can't wait to see these super inflated statements that Apple come up with. The iPhone 13 runs 150 billion times faster than the original iPhone. <laughs> it's like, okay. I wonder if they will call it M1X or M2 or whatever to take advantage of that marketing hype or, you know, will they stick with the usual a15 naming convention. Uh, whatever it is, it is expected to be 15% to 20% more efficient than the current iPhone 12 range, which is pretty decent. We're also getting a better camera. Now, this one really surprised me. The renders and leaked images that we've seen so far, you know, show these huge camera modules. I mean, it was already massive on the 12 Pro Max and the 12 Pro. So are we getting new lenses, a bigger sensor? There's a lot of detail here, but the pictures suggest we are going big on the cameras, which for a lot of people, is reason number one to upgrade. And for photography and content creation is great news. The camera on the iPhone 12 is already amazing. So this one could be a great reason to upgrade. But another reason, and this is a very likely one as well, is the pricing. We know that Apple have been trying to recently become more competitive with pricing. Uh, they haven't really been bumping the price too much recently. They're making their profits, I'm sure. They're stitching us up on headphones and things like that. So, uh, But they have introduced on you know, the new iPhone 12 mini and SE options on other products like the Apple Watch, which, you know, all these more affordable options. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if they get really aggressive on the pricing for the 13. Here's some of the rumored pricing. And as and when I get new leaks, I'll make sure to update them here. Right now I'm on the fence, I'm not sure yet. So is 120 Hertz enough to sway you over to the iPhone 13? Could I personally let go of my S21 Ultra and go back to using an iPhone? I don't know. What about the new Samsung phones? You know, in a week or so, we get to see what Samsung are bringing to the table, which is also gonna be great. All I can say is, it's an exciting time to be looking for a new device. There are great options already available, but in reality, for the majority of people, even the iPhone 11 is still an amazing device. The S21 Ultra will probably still be an amazing device a year from now. If we miss this upgrade, there's gonna be another one next year. So unless you're on a really old device that is stopping you from having fun, taking photos of your children or pets, or being productive, you could always do nothing and stick with what you've got. What will you do? Are you skipping this one or are you already getting ready to pre-order it? Maybe you're waiting for a foldable iPhone, who knows? There's a lot of other things to cover, like, you know, are we getting a USB-C port, lightning? Are we going portless? So stay tuned as I will be covering the iPhone 13 very closely here on the channel before, during and after the launch as well. I'll see you in a smiling faces on the next one. Bye. Nowadays, nothing really is. Only one of me and nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's ice. I got one key on, blinging she ice free.